book of Acts. Oh, all right. It's been the cost. Where else are we Yes, it is. Acts, okay. the second chapter of the book of Acts. And we're going to start at verse 13 and just lift four verses. Then we're going to sit down. Verse 13, chapter 2, Acts chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 13. Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, <clears throat> lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. The word of the Lord is blessed. I want to talk about combustible Holy Ghost. A little bit. I want to talk about, because our theme this Wednesday is the fire that starts here. And so I've got to talk about the combustible Holy Ghost. <laughs> amen, amen. amen. I, uh, when when Greater Bethesda first began, one of the first prayers that I had was the Lord would send strong men. Amen. Uh, because the heartbeat of the church are the ladies, but the backbone of the church are the men. Yes. Right? And, you, and, and men draw other men. Yes, they do. Right? And so I said, Lord, send on some strong men. And, and, and y'all need to know that Christian manhood is in short supply. Right. Just yesterday, I got it. Tell them, right? Just yesterday, my son and I had to go to, into DC, and they were having the Capital Pride. What's called the Capital Pride Parade. Yes. They should have. They tried to trick us. It's not the Capital Pride Parade. That was the name they gave to their agenda. I went down there, and there was all rainbows and all that kind of stuff going on down there. Praise the Lord. And, 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 and so I realized. I realize now that. The devil wants to get us tripped up on semantics. Right? What is marriage? Is marriage a contract or is it a sacrament? Well, we here at Greater Bethesda, we believe in marriage as the Bible defines marriage. Um, and, and the book is real clear. It says a couple things. It, for example, you know that a woman marries a groom. On your wedding day, your husband is your groom. But you live with a husband. Amen. That man becomes a husband to you. And a husband has responsibilities. Husband is a verb. It means to take care of and to nurture. So he was your groom the day you got married. Me and Mama, 20 years ago, coming up, I, I was her groom on that day. But from the moment that I said I do, I became her husband. Amen. And responsibilities to take care of and to nurture uh, until death do us part. Now it came in, and, and so when you act, act like this is just a, a contract between two companies, a merging of two businesses, uh, it's got to be more than that because I don't have to take care of my partner in the business. But I told the Lord, if you give me breath, I got to take care of this one right here. Got to make sure that these three and four that are in my house that they have something to eat if I go hungry. Got to make sure if you're bumping the night if something's in the house, I got to get up and address it because I am the husband. Right, right. So, 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 talking about marriage, talking about marriage, right? And, and I, I looked at the wife. Did you know a man? The Bible says the man that findeth a wife. But y'all talking about the good part. I'm talking about the fine part. <laughs> that means, if I understand it correctly, she was a wife when he got there. She possessed the attributes of being a wife. When I arrived, she was a wife. Amen. When I arrived, my heart could dwell safely with her. When I when I arrived, she went to the market. You follow me? And, and, and so, how can we say we can define these things as we act like the marriage that my role began the day we got married is when I adopted those attributes? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. no. Huh? And, 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 and so we got to move on because manhood is in short supply. Mm -hmm. And so. I thank God for the men of Greater Bethesda. Amen. Come on, ladies, put your hands together for the greatest men's department. Amen. 
the Clark Kent Club. And our Miss Department leader, Brother Rick Taylor. Praise God. Praise God. Now, now, the book of John, ninth chapter, verse 31, it declares, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So when it, we, we as believers, we have to understand God hears what we pray louder than what we say. Oh my God. Uh, he heard your prayer. Yeah. He heard the desire of your heart. He knew it. And so sometimes we get scared and we say other things, but God here, he heard your prayer. And, and, and so one of my prayers for this men's week, weekend, the first one was, Lord, bless the milk horse. <laughs> Praise God. And he did. He did. Praise the Lord. Bless the milk horse. Bless us all. Amen. <laughs> yep. They, they make fun of us. All right. <laughs> and, and, and the other was that this be a time of revival. A time for the men in particular, but the church as a whole. Give us a, a revival, God. Let yeah. us see about this fire like that. that's starting inside of us. What, what, yes, what is it you wanted us to say? And God said, tell them to trust me when they pray. Mm -hmm. Trust me when you're praying. Yes. Amen. In, in other words, pray, pray for process and not for outcome. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of the outcome. You pray that my will be done. And trust that my will is in your best interest. You don't, don't tell me, right? I, I, I got to the point, I'm tell a story. I got to the point in my, with my wife, I've had enough gifts that I had bought her that I just knew she was going to love. Right. That she did not love. That chocolate diamond, I'm still mad about that. I went all the way for my chocolate queen and got a chocolate diamond. Because she ain't like it either. And I was ready. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, baby, damn it. Uh, <laughs> so after a couple of those, after a couple of years of hitting and missing, I decided to ask her. Say, Lord, baby, give me three things that you might want, and so I can surprise you with one of these three. <laughs> so what I tried to do was streamline the process. <laughs> Stop trying to anticipate the outcome and streamline the process. Ah, yeah, yeah. God said, that's what I need y'all to do. Stop trying to anticipate the outcome okay. and, and streamline the process. Stop trying to say, God, I, I, don't, I, I need this job or I need that job. And pray, God, you put me where you want me to be. Right. Uh, you know, God knows what you have need of. That's right. uh, and so to the men of Greater Bethesda, God is calling on us. Amen. To streamline our process. And, and, and so as we were, one of the other desires of our hearts was to have an opportunity to minister to young men. We call it boys to men. Back in the meeting, remember? And uh, so I asked God to give us an opportunity to have a boys to men discussion. And I was disappointed when I saw all these little kids. I didn't see very many. I just saw the volunteers and the little kids. Right. And I'm looking out the window, I'm like, okay, God. And, and, and then I go in the office and then God does what he does. And I come back and I see that it's the volunteers who are circled around. Right. The teenage boys, the volunteers were the ones who were being poured into. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that Brian is not the smart man. Mm -hmm. Stop getting in God's way, Brian King. Right? Because God had wanted the volunteers to hear. Yes. See, in my mind, I had thought that the little kids coming were the ones who were supposed to hear. Yes, but God had it perfect in his heart that there were about eight, nine teenage boys, y'all right. see it on the Facebook, that, that, that were sitting around that God wanted to pour into them. Yes. So I got to stop acting like I know yes. where God wants me to go and just move with his hands. Yes. Uh, yes. All right, so, so. so again, again, as I was sitting there watching Brother, Brother Cummings Dickie Mathis and all those brothers pouring in to these young men. A, a poem jumped in my head by a guy named Will Allen Drumgool. And, and it simply says, an old man going a lone highway came at the evening cold and gray to a chasm, vast and wide and steep, with waters that were running cold and deep. The old man stopped 
and crossed in the twilight then. Because the southern stream had no fear for him. But he turned when safe on the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim there, you're wasting your strength with building here. Your journey will end with any day, and you never again will pass this way. You have crossed this chasm, vast and wide. Why build ye this bridge at the even time? The builder lifted his old gray head. Good friend, in the path that I have come, he said, there followeth after me this day a youth whose feet must pass this way. The chasm that was as naught to me to that fair-haired youth may a pitfall be. <laughs> he too must cross in the twilight dim, so good friend, I'm building this bridge for him. Mm. Uh, He's not even a preacher, but I felt that in my spirit. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Uh, he, and so as I sat there, and I watched Derek and those guys talking to him, the Lord said, bridges. He said, we're sharing from the mistakes we have made. We're, we're, not, we're not there telling you all that we was always perfect. But we're building bridges that you may cross over uh, so that you don't have to fall. In this, I, I told him about not spending every dime you get. I told him about keeping your body clean. Mistakes that I have made. Praise God. Trying to build a bridge. And so then I was studying last night. And would you not know that the word, the Greek word for bridge is patakletus. We'll get to that with that in a second. Uh, Pentecost Sunday, y'all. Pentecost Sunday. Some of y'all don't understand Pentecost Sunday. Uh, in order to understand Pentecost, we have to understand the Trinity. We have to understand the the, the triune being of God. Yes. Right. And, and I make sure I don't I want to insult, but I want to make sure we understand. God has many faces and many facets of the same person. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and the best way I can explain it is Brian King has them too. There are some people who call me Pastor King. Right. right? And it's me. And when you call me that, I respond a certain way. Yes. Right? There are some people who call me Daddy. And when they say that, same is still the same guy. That's right. But I respond a different way right. to the name Daddy. You see that? Right? There's, there's other people who call me Mr. King. And I have to respond a certain way. Still the same guy. Well, God is the same way. He's in one person. Right, right. <laughs> Three persons, rather, in one That's it. being. And so Pentecost is the day that we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Amen. That being him, the person of God, that is the Holy Spirit. And get in the Greek, the name for comforter, which is what Jesus said he was going to send, he told him the Holy Ghost was coming. Oh, by the way, sometimes I'm coaching, so sometimes I say Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay. Amen. Holy Spirit, I know it's deeper. <laughs> Praise God, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. And I'm going to be on the tape, so I'll say Holy Spirit. <laughs> but where I come from, they call him the Holy Ghost. Hey! So every now and then, the Holy Ghost might slip out, but I'm talking about the same. <laughs> Jesus told him, he said that I would not leave you comfortless. But I will send another comforter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and who, who came was the Holy Ghost. That's right. and, and that Greek word for Holy Ghost or comforter is paracletus. Uh -huh. Bridge. Bridge. Wow. wow. Yes. Right. So, okay, okay. Now, as a young boy, trying to understand what Pentecost was, it, they told us it was the birthday of the church. And we used to eat good, so I like that. Right? The birthday of the church, but... They were not talking about the birth of the congregation. No. That's church anniversary. We ate it too. <laughs> no, no. They were talking about the birthday or the beginning of the body, the ecclesia, the body of believers all over the world. They were talking about Brady Bethesda. They were talking about the body of Christ. Amen. Right? And, and, and so this Holy Ghost comes in and begins the body of Christ. So go back to the text real quickly. I'm, I'm going to be done soon, y'all, because I know we all got to come back this afternoon. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Mother said yes. <laughs> see, see, I'm not going to look over here. When we build when we build our new sanctuary, 
mother will be sitting way down there. <laughs> Rick's gonna still be here. Ed's gonna be there. But mother will be down there. <laughs> Go back to the text really quickly. In the book of Acts, now, the book of Acts in, in, in your King James is called the Acts of the Apostles. But it really should be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. Right? And, and, and all in Acts 1, you know, Jesus actually ascends. Right? So his disciples, those who are farmers, they, they watch him ascend into heaven. And then they leave. And they head from back into Jerusalem. And the interesting part is, as they were heading back, they had to cross a bridge. And so they come back in, and they go into the home of a young man, a wealthy young man named John Mark, who was the assistant to Peter. And they go into his house, and he had a nice house in Jerusalem, and, and above the, at the roof of the house, they had like a roof terrace, which they called the upper room. Right? And so they, they surmised that a uh, hundred and seven people were there, men and women. Yep. They went in, and they go to the upper room, and they're all talking about what they just saw. Man, Jesus is gone. Jesus is gone. Wow. What are we going to do? I, I left my job, and Jesus is gone. I moved out of my hometown, and Jesus is gone. Thank you, Frank. Everybody that ever knew and that ever loved, I left back in Lithonia, Georgia, and moved all the way up here, and now Jesus is gone. So I, I can imagine it was a pretty somber occasion up in that place. But, but what happened was, they had all come where God wanted them to be. They had all now got it, and so the Bible said that and when they were in one place, and on one accord, <laughs> that, there came a sound as of a mighty rushing wind. In the middle of while we're complaining, in the middle of while we're saying, what am I going to do? There came a sound of a mighty rushing wind. God is saying, I need you to listen. <laughs> when you go back home, wherever you do, I need you to listen. Turn the music down and listen. In your situation, listen. You, you may be hearing the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Uh, and it came into the place where they were sitting and it fell upon them and uh, y'all know and they began to speak in other tongues as the spirit of God gave them utterance yes. so now we have they stop talking about what's not going to happen and, and, and the spirit begins to give them utterance you have people from all different parts of Mesopotamia and the Mediterranean all representing all those regions and, and they're all speaking in foreign tongue or in tongues that were strange to them. And people around the neighborhood heard them. 125 people on a roof make a lot of noise. So the Bible says that people came around them to hear what was going on, which puts us at verse 12 of chapter 2. The people came in there and heard them and it says, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying to one another, what meaneth this? What's going on here? What are these people doing? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. They must be drunk. And, and, you know, why, why are you praising God so hard? You must be drunk. We assume something's got to be wrong with you. And then Peter, Peter, you remember Peter? Oh, yeah. The one who used to get drunk. <laughs> Nobody can tell you they sober to somebody who's drunk. Yeah. No, they not drunk. I know a drunk look like that ain't drunk. <laughs> mm. so, yeah, see, some of us know what it looks like when the devil has you bound. That's right. Right? Some of us, even though we sit up here talking and preaching, we still know what bound looks like. That's right. So, so you can't fool us. <laughs> Right? You, you can't tell me that you're bound when you're not. Yeah. Try to pretend. Hell, right. oh, I used to. Lord. I didn't know what it's delivered to me. I used to. No, you used to. We know. Right? Also, you can't tell me that you're free when you're bound. That's right. Because I can look at your face and see you still get that. Mm. Well, right, right. I, 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 can tell, I can tell how you and your wife are sitting that y'all ain't speaking. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so, so, look, 
look out. I'm not going to look out. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so Peter, the Bible says in verse 14, Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken to my words. Now, I want you to understand, the Holy Ghost is still moving. That's one thing we have to understand. That the Holy Ghost calls us to speak in tongues. And the Holy Ghost gives us a dance. And the Holy Ghost gives us all kinds of gyrations. But even when the music stops, the Holy Ghost is still moving. That's right. Uh, even after I come up off the ground, the Holy Ghost is still moving. Oh, yes. When I straighten out my hat and put my coat back on, the Holy Ghost is still moving. And so Peter was unctioned by the Holy Ghost the same way they were when the tongues were going forth. And he tells the people, all of y'all listen to me. Verse 15, they are not drunk as ye suppose, because it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Just being realistic. The liquor store ain't even open yet. They can't be that drunk that quick. Praise the Lord. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. This is that. The thing I love about the Word of God, the thing I love about the New Testament, is that it always points back to the Old Testament. Oh, yes. So that it always verifies what has already been said. So you don't have to ask yourself, is this new stuff? He goes back and shows you, right? He said, Joel said. He said, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. That's what Joel said. See? And so he began to speak to the church about the church that had already been spoken of. Right? He said, old men, you guys don't have the strength to move us forward. Yes. Yeah. But what you do have is you can envision, you can dream of a better today. You can tell us how to correct things in the building right now. You don't know tomorrow. You don't have social media presence. Bro, Bishop, you don't have Facebook. Bro, Superintendent, you don't have an Instagram. And so that might not be, the tomorrow connection might not be yours, but you can talk about living holy today. You can talk about what we need to be doing in the room. So the old men, you're going to dream the dream of a perfection here. Yeah, basically. Huh? Yeah, but the young men. Now, y'all young boys who have the Instagrams and the Hulus and the... I tried to think of some cool things, but BJ's not here, so I don't have any more. But <laughs> he gave me two of them. Hulu and the other things that y'all have. I'm old, so I'll be still dreaming. I'll be dreaming. <laughs> but the... But the God's intention is to perfect what is here, but to keep moving. That's right. So he said, I need my young men to say I have vision for the future. Yes. I need my young men to dream, my old men are going to dream, and then the young men are going to take that into the future. Yes. Now, Joel said that before the church even started. Yes. So why are we arguing about it today? Oh my God. Why are we acting like young people have nothing to say? Oh my God. This was the plan back in Joel's yes. day. How are you going to be in charge of the committee for 50 years? Uh, Which one are you dreaming or visioning? Hey. 50 years? The vision got to change in 50 years. Or get some glasses or something. 50 years? How can you be in charge of moving something forward for 50 years? Right. Yes. <laughs> Why? Well, that's because that's what we do. Because I feel good about being the president of the bottle washer. I don't even know how to wash bottles no more. Matter of fact, they don't even make bottles no more. But I'm the president of the bottle washers committee. And I have a parking space. And I want y'all to talk about bottle washing. And we're going to keep washing the bottles like we did back in Martin Luther King time. Loose year. He said that young men, you will have visions. And old men, you will dream dreams. Because uh, 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 the Holy Spirit's here, and this is that. Yes. Why? why are you screaming? Because we're moving on. Why, why, are, why are you all in one place in one accord? Because we're moving on now. Because this is that. I, I was talking to Rick yesterday, and, and Sister Alicia, I'm never coming to the barbershop by myself again. 
Because me and Rick don't know how to go home. <laughs> well, I don't know what time to leave out. Like, we don't know. We was just, we was late. <laughs> it, our, my, my little beard has been that. It has been that. But we began to talk. And we talked about how man is the only animal that will let a men stay. Talking about the lions and how male lions have a role. Female lions have a role and male lions have a role. Female lions have the food and feed the children. The male lions are to protect the territory. Protect their pride. Right? There's a call that the female lion makes That's right. when the territory is in trouble. That's right. It's a sound that only she can make. There's a sound that he identifies immediately that the territory is in trouble. So I don't care where I am or what I'm doing, if I'm asleep, if I'm awake, when I hear that sound, I know it's my job. Right. And if I cannot come, if I refuse to come, then I lose my position yes. as the leader of the tribe. My, my, my. Mm. Human beings are the only ones who will let a male fail to protect his territory and still be the head of the tribe. He can still come home and mate and eat and all that, and he hasn't done what he's supposed to do. No, the female lions will kick you out. Yeah. Female crocodiles, you got to go. Yeah. You don't, you got to go. We are the only ones who left an unproductive man stay. Mm. <laughs> we, that's why we was late. We was talking. See, So, so it goes down, going down, put down. It says they not drunk. Because this is what we're talking about. Verse 17, it shall come to pass in the last days. He just quotes again what Joel had said. In verse 17 and 18. And then he says in verse 18, And on my servants and my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. In other words, now, it's not just a family thing. I'm not just going to do sons and daughters. But whoever's serving me, I'm going to pour my anointing out on them. Yes. It's enough because your daddy's the pastor, meaning that you won't be the pastor. Mm. Right? I'm not going to put that pressure on neither one of my children. Praise God. Amen. If God has anointed them for that, so be it. Amen. But I'm, because your name is king, don't mean you're the pastor of the Bethesda. Right. I know people who are the bishops of their jurisdictions because their daddy was the bishop. That's right. Mm. That might not be your... That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Right? And, and so we have to stop letting the con constructs of man right. get in the way of the business of God. Because you want to maintain right. your pockets. Yes. You're going to get in God's way because you want to. I heard a preacher once say, You're going to miss your chariot trying to get your pockets. <laughs> Come on, here, preach. You know, I like that preacher. He said, Come on, my tree preacher. I hear you. Now, so, so. Then verse he says, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood, fire, vapor, of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before that great and noble day of the Lord. He's talking about the same thing from Revelations. He's saying the end times are coming. Even then, no, he didn't sugarcoat anything. He says the end times are coming. This Peter's standing up there telling them. See, a whole lot of us now, we're afraid to talk about the end. Thinking the people not gonna come to your church if you talk about the end. <laughs> the people not gonna come to your church if you talk about holiness. Right. Uh, so you gotta call it the Capital Pride Parade, not the Gay Pride Parade. <laughs> don't don't say loose here. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Don't say that because then they won't come to your church. Yeah. But Peter stood up there. Peter stood up there and said, "Hey, in the end times." This is what's going to happen. Now, now, I, I got to get out your way because I'm going to get out your way. I'm looking this way, y'all. I'm looking this way the rest of the time. The assignment that was given to those people when the Holy Spirit fell on them, fell on their tongues like fire, is the same assignment that we have now. Ladies, you will have to help me and admit there is nothing more powerful than a man with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. There's nothing more powerful in your house. There's nothing more powerful in your life. There's nothing more powerful in your business. There's nothing more powerful in your family than a man who has the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now whether he uses, that's not else. 
but to have the Holy Spirit because when you got the Holy Ghost, you can start fires. Oh, oh, yeah. you, you're a combustible individual. Uh, well, I, the Holy Ghost was everybody, but it's something about a man that comes with the Holy Hey, 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 hey. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. I complain all the time. Y'all hear me complain about I was abused growing up. I was psychologically tormented. <laughs> but I'm glad my mama and my daddy had the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I, I am. I'm glad that I, I've watched my father speak in tongues. And I've watched the tears roll down. Because I, I learned something from that. Uh, not just about rolling on the ground. Right. But I, the Holy Ghost is a decision maker. Yes, helps he helps you to make, make decisions. Yes. Not just to shout. But he helps me to make decisions yes. on Tuesday. Right. Right. Amen. I pray for Brady Bethesda that we have some Thursday Holy Ghost. Because right. right. yeah. all of us got Convocation Holy Ghost. Yeah. We got Memphis Holy Ghost. We got Big Hats Holy Ghost. But do we have in the line at Starbucks Holy Ghost? Yeah. Do we have pay my taxes Holy Ghost? When, you, when, when you don't treat me right, do I have Holy Ghost? That's right. When you don't call my name, do I still have the Holy Ghost? When I did not win what I thought I was going to win, when things did not go my way, do I still have the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Huh. It's more than just shouting. That's right. Got to be more than just shouting. Huh. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, we were little, we used to play and shout. We used, to, we used to pretend we said people at church, and we'd be going downstairs and we'd pretend like we were shouting like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you did it too, don't worry. Yeah, just thank you, thank you, you did it too. <laughs> and people would walk through the fellowship hall, and they would see me and Marley and all this playing, and for a second they, oh, they just playing. Because <laughs> the, the, the playing looked like you really had nothing. <laughs> Uh, but, but God is saying, I will know that my spirit abides in you by the decisions that you make. Because the Holy Ghost is combustible. That means that it can put together two inert or unrelated things and create fire. That's what combustible means. Uh, okay? Brothers, I'm in the fear of redundance, I'm going to touch on something from Bible study. Which is where this fire really began, ladies. I don't know, y'all weren't there. If you missed it, which you should have missed it because it was all male. <laughs> but if I can tap for my spiritual grandfather, Bishop A.D. Head, you were the loser. If you were, remember you said, if you weren't there, you was the loser. Yeah. Uh, this, group, this church that was started by Peter spread as far north as Antioch, North Africa. And, and, and it went down into Rome. Now, when you go to Antioch, you would find that the bishop of Antioch was a guy named Alexander. Right? And then in Rome, the bishop of Rome was a guy named Rufus. Right? And a little, a little search to the genealogy will show us that Bishop Alexander and Bishop Rufus were brothers. And then if you go to the book of Mark, huh, I'm going to try not to go fast. I feel it in my shondo. Mark 15 and 21. It's talking about, it says, And they compelled one Simon of Serene, it's Rydian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. So I need you to see, check it out. We have Jesus being led down the Bidirosa, being led to his final destination. Well, second and, and, and while he's being, he's been beaten and he's been scourged and his body is bloody beyond recognition and he's carrying the cross and he can't hardly move no more and the, the Romans said he was taking too long. This procession's taking too long. People are sitting on the side jeering and they said, you're taking too long. So they look around and they see a black man. Yeah, he was black. Because the Cyrenians were in were Libyan. Yeah. Huh? So they see a black dude just in the crowd and the police racially profiled. They say, come here. But oh, wait, sir, it's just a hood. Come here. Wait, sir, I can't breathe. Come here. And they pull Simon the Cyrenian out. And they tell him 
they compel him to carry the cross. And so what you see, Simon gets up under, why me? I didn't do nothing. Wait, um, I'm just mind my own business. I'm just going to 7-Eleven to get what, what train I get. A train and some Skittles. I should get some Skittles. Get over here. And it appeared, now, the Bible says he was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Right? That means those boys were with him. They were about 12 years old. They were with him. And they watched their daddy get pulled by the police into this situation. Right? That he had no control over, that he did not choose. Right? So he, <laughs> they take and put him under the cross. Talk to us, Pastor. And now he's holding the cross, and the children are watching. They put him under the cross, and he's carrying this guy. What? And, and I told him yeah, on Thursday, I can almost imagine Simon going, "Well, what? I didn't even do nothing." And then Jesus said, "I didn't do nothing either." Right. <laughs> Come on now, Pastor. Hey, hey, and I'm walking, and, and, and so now, and so it seemed like Simon just got. They treated Simon so bad. Ah, they treated man, my man Simon, so bad, but then God said, pull back. And look, look and see. Because you see, what happened was, when Simon grabbed a hold to that cross, he got covered in the blood of Jesus. What happened was, there's no way you would have held on to that cross and not have the blood of Jesus all over you. And so when he left from there, he was covered in the blood of Jesus. They wasn't going to kill him, but when he left from there, he had the blood of Jesus on him. Hallelujah. Also, when Simon was carrying that cross, hallelujah, he, 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 he felt how heavy that cross was. He felt the burden of Jesus. The only two people can talk about how heavy the cross was. We can talk about the blood that he shed for us. We can make songs up and carry that old rugged cross. But only two people can talk about how heavy the rugged cross is. Constantine's mother, Helen, yes. that she wanted to find the cross. Yes. And so, after long after she searched the entire uh, uh, kingdom trying to find the cross, and she found out that the cross, when she came a hold right around to it, she found out that the cross was made of dogwood. The same thing as the ark was made of. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and when she got there, the cross was all splintered and tattered and torn. Yes. And so, what she did was, she broke the cross into pieces and began to send it to the churches so that you can have a piece of the cross. <laughs> so, so right now we've been worshiping, we've been praying a piece of the cross. We are saved and all we have is a piece of the cross. But Simon, Simon got the whole thing. Simon was able to carry the burden of the cross. He, it seemed like he was being mistreated. Come on now. Uh, it seemed like things wasn't going his way. But what happened was God was putting him in a position to carry, to feel my you. Because if you don't carry your cross, you can't be my disciple. And be covered in my blood. Yes. Uh, so anyway. And then the last thing. The last thing. I told y'all the people on the side. Were set, the people who were watching Jesus were standing on the side. And Jesus was coming down the middle. The only one who stepped in the middle with Jesus was Simon. So the only one who was able to see what Jesus saw was Simon. The only one who was able to see the cross, to see Galgotha's Hill from the same perspective as Jesus was Simon. Because you got to understand, Jesus always saw the other side of the cross. Uh, Jesus saw the victory on the other side of the cross. Jesus saw hope on the other side. That's why I love it because no matter how bad your side looks, Jesus always has another side. 